Well guys, welcome to this video on partial pressures. This video follows on directly from the previous video on gaseous exchange. So if you haven't watched that one, I suggest you just nip back and watch that one first. But let's get into this. Now then, in order to make a bit more sense of exactly how gases flow from one place to another, we need to talk about a concept called partial pressure. Now partial pressure is a measure of the concentration or proportion of a gas in a mixture of gases. It's not exactly the same as concentration, um, but since the proportions are the same, we might as well use them synonymously for the sake of this video. So partial pressure is a measure of the concentration of a gas in a mixture of gases. Okay, so the air, for example, is a mixture of gases. It's got mostly nitrogen, some carbon dioxide, a decent bit of oxygen, and then a few bits and pieces of various other inert gases. Um, and at sea level, partial pressures are for, uh, for air, for oxygen, and for carbon dioxide are as follows. So the air is the whole thing, so the partial pressure is 100%. And so the air pressure at sea level is 760 millimeters of mercury. Now then, because oxygen, the oxygen molecules that make up part of 21% of that air, um, because it's only 21% of that air, its contribution to that overall pressure is only 21% of the overall pressure. This is what it means by a partial pressure. And the way you can think of it is this. If in the same volume of gas, you took out all the other gases and just left the oxygen in, then the oxygen pressure would be 21% of the overall. It would be a lot less, wouldn't it? Because they'd have more space, those molecules have more space to bounce around in basically. So the partial pressure of oxygen is the same thing as saying, if in the volume of air, you took all the other gases out and just left the oxygen, what would the pressure be? Likewise, if you took all the gases out and just left the carbon dioxide, what would the pressure be? And those are called the partial pressures of those gases. Um, and they're directly related to the proportion of those gases in that overall mixture of gases. So in the air, oxygen makes up 21% of the overall gas, therefore it makes up 21% of the overall pressure. Same with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide makes up approximately 0.4% of the overall volume uh, or the, the overall number of molecules, percentage of molecules of the air. And so therefore it's the equivalent percentage, it's only 0.04% of the overall pressure at sea level, the overall pressure of air. And in this case, that makes it approximately 0 0.3 uh, millimeters of mercury. Millimeters of mercury being a measure of pressure, of course. And this is important because the air that we breathe in, again, at sea level, and we will talk in another video about how things change at altitude, but it's important to get the concepts right first. At sea level, the air that we breathe in, because it's 21% oxygen, that oxy the partial pressure or the concentration of that oxygen in the alveolus, or at least that's arriving to the alveolus, will be 21% of the overall pressure. It will be 160 millimeters of mercury. Likewise, the carbon dioxide that we breathe in, so the air that's coming in from outside into our lungs, just prior to reaching the alveoli, it's going to be 0 0.3 millimetres of mercury. That's the difference in partial pressures between the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. Now, you'll remember, in order to, uh, for a gas to exchange across a membrane, there needs to be a difference, there needs to be a differential. There needs to be some kind of diffusion gradient. So what happens is once we breathe this air in, that is 21% oxygen and 0.4% carbon dioxide, we're setting up diffusion gradients between that air as it arrives in the alveolus and the capillary network around it. So just to reiterate for a moment, Partial pressure of oxygen, sometimes just um, written as PPO2, and partial pressure of carbon dioxide, PPCO2, are important in the cardiorespiratory system. 
because those partial pressures will dictate to us the diffusion gradient between the alveolus and the capillaries or in a moment we'll look at the difference between the capillaries and the muscle tissue if there is a high partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolus and a low partial pressure of oxygen in the capillary which there is oxygen will diffuse from the alveolus into the capillary so that diffusion as we've said already occurs where there is a gradient where there's a difference between the two pressures we're going to look at this diagram in a little bit more detail in just a moment um, but just to have it all on screen before we break it down into its pieces I want you to note there's a couple of things that are important here and that is that proportions of gases change only at gas exchange surfaces so partial pressures therefore only change at gas exchange surfaces and as you can see on the diagram there are only really two gas exchange surfaces that we need to concern ourselves with the first one is the exchange surface between the alveoli and the capillaries of the lungs and the second gas exchange surface is between again the capillaries and the tissues of the body so at each of those surfaces in the lungs and in the tissues the partial pressures of oxygen will change and the partial pressures of carbon dioxide will change depending on whether it's picking up or dropping off oxygen or carbon dioxide and note again that this happens at the alveoli where carbon dioxide is dropped off and oxygen is picked up and it also happens we're interested in the muscle cells but essentially it happens in any tissues of the body wherever there are capillaries because that is what capillaries are for capillaries are there to enable gas exchange or gaseous exchange and remember the the final key point before we start looking at the diagram is that the bigger the diffusion gradient that's the bigger the difference between the partial pressure of a gas in one location versus the location next to it the bigger that difference the bigger that gradient the faster that gas will flow across that surface across that membrane to try and equalize things up so if we can have a really big difference between the oxygen partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli and the partial pressure of oxygen in the capillaries around the alveoli then we are going to have that oxygen flow into the capillaries much faster because we've got a bigger diffusion gradient let's look at this diagram so in this diagram you'll know initially that the atmospheric air is as we've described it in terms of its partial pressures partial pressure of oxygen is 160 millimeters of mercury partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 0 0.3 but once we take that air in as shown by the arrow on the diagram once we've once we breathe that air in it mingles and mixes with the air that's already in the lungs and now the the proportions of the air that's already in the lungs is is somewhat different to atmospheric air um, and once it's once the atmospheric air that we breathe in mixes with the proportions of the air in the lungs we're left with alveolar air where the partial pressure of oxygen is about 100 millimeters of mercury so it's making up a somewhat smaller proportion overall of the of the air of the overall gas the alveolar air in the lungs and the proportion of carbon dioxide has shot up so we've got somewhat the air if we're making a comparison between the alveolar air and the atmospheric air we've got somewhat less oxygen in the alve alveolar air and significantly more carbon dioxide um, and the reason for that is you can see on the left hand side of the diagram here where we've talking about the um, the proportion the, the partial pressures of the two gases in the pulmonary arteries bringing that from the heart it's been around the body it's dropped off all its oxygen and so on that blood that's returning the partial pressures of the two gases in the blood that's returning to the lungs is significantly different you'll notice that in the pulmonary arteries the partial pressure of oxygen is way down it's all beca because that oxygen has been used it's, it's it's been used for respiration so it's way down to 40 millimeters of mercury 
And so when that when that blood arrives at the lungs and the blood is at 40 millimetres of mercury in terms of oxygen partial pressure and the alveolar air is at 100 millimetres of mercury, we've got a difference of 60 millimetres of mercury. And because that then creates a diffusion gradient from the alveolar air towards the pulmonary arteries, the partial pressure in the pulmonary arteries, then oxygen is going to flow from the high pressure where it's at 100 millimetres of mercury. It's going to flow to try and equalise and it's going to flow into the bloodstream to try and equalise. So it's going to bring that 40 all the way up to 100 if it possibly can. But look at the look at the blue, the carbon dioxide on the left hand side of the diagram, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide on its way back from the heart to the lungs is quite high. It's significantly higher than the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolar air, whereas it's 46 um, millimetres of mercury on the way back, having picked up this carbon dioxide from from the, the muscle tissues and the rest of the tissues in the body. It's on its way back um, to the lungs in the pulmonary arteries. It's 46 millimetres of mercury, but the alveolar air is only 40 millimetres of mercury. So we've got a diffusion gradient that's going in the other direction. It's there's, there's a greater partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary capillaries than there is in the alveolar air. So that carbon dioxide, while the oxygen is coming in, because the diffusion gradient runs in that in one direction for oxygen, the diffusion gradient runs in the opposite direction for carbon dioxide. So that carbon dioxide is then going to go out, okay, so towards um, towards the alveoli. So we've got this gas exchange in the capillaries um, surrounding the alveoli in the lungs, and then the blood that is passed out of the lungs towards having having picked up or dropped off the various gases heading back towards the heart to be sent around the body that blood now its partial pressures are a hundred millimeters of mercury is, is the partial pressure of oxygen and 40 millimeters of mercury is the partial pressure for carbon dioxide and you can see that on the right hand side of the diagram and so the blood that is being passed around um, from the from the left side of the heart which is the right hand side of our diagram from the left side of the heart being sent to the tissues of the body, its partial pressures in terms of the gases that are being carried by the blood. It's 100 millimetres of mercury of oxygen and 40 millimetres of mercury of carbon dioxide. So that's what it's, th those are the pressures um, when the blood arrives at the muscle tissue or any tissues really, but let's, let's focus on muscle tissues because this is AMP. So that blood arrives with 100 millimetres of mercury, partial pressure of oxygen, and 40 millimetres of mercury, partial, partial pressure of carbon dioxide. And so it arrives eventually through the systemic arteries. Notice on the right hand side of the diagram again, same pressures, nothing changes because we haven't hit any gas exchange surfaces. We're just carrying it to where it's needed. When we arrive at the systemic capillaries, those are the capillaries around the tissues of the body. In our case, again, in embedded in the in the muscles and through the muscles and around the muscles when we get to that point because the muscles are demanding oxygen for respiration and any oxygen that's previously been brought there has been started to be used up the oxygen the proportions of oxygen in the muscle in this in the tissue throughout the body is dropping as we respire as we produce energy and so when the blood arrives to the tissues it has a partial pressure of oxygen of 100 millimetres of mercury, but the cells are much lower. They're all the way down um, potentially to 40 um, millimetres of mercury of oxygen. And so again, we've got this diffusion gradient whereby we've got a greater proportion of oxygen in the bloodstream and a lower proportion of oxygen in the cells. And so the oxygen flows from the bloodstream across the membrane into the cells. And you'll notice the opposite is true for carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide levels in the systemic arteries, as you can see on the, um, the graph on the right of the diagram, is 40 millimetres of mercury. And when it arrives at the cells, which are, which are producing carbon dioxide as a byproduct of respiration, 
those those cells are full of carbon dioxide um, and the blood is less full so the cells have got 46 millimeters of mercury as their partial pressure of carbon dioxide but the blood has only 40 millimeters of mercury we've again got a diffusion gradient that's going in the opposite way to oxygen so the co2 is going to go out from the cells into the bloodstream and then as you can see on the left hand side therefore the contributions or the proportions of the different gases in the blood on the way back to the heart after having been to the the body's tissues on the way back to the heart through the systemic veins we're, we're well down on oxygen and we're slightly elevated on carbon dioxide as you would expect to see so now we've increased the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the systemic veins and we've reduced the partial pressure of oxygen in the systemic veins and that blood is now going to head back to the heart the right side of the heart and then ultimately to the lungs where again the the partial pressures will be somewhat different in the blood to what they are in the lungs and so down in the tissues at the bottom of the diagram we're taking oxygen out of the blood and putting carbon dioxide into the blood we're then following the the systemic veins through the heart to the lungs and then at the lungs we're doing the opposite so at the lungs through the pulmonary arteries the blood that's arriving is low in oxygen and high in carbon dioxide lower in oxygen than the alveolar air and higher in carbon dioxide than the alveolar air therefore oxygen is going to flow from the alveoli into the bloodstream carbon dioxide from the bloodstream into the alveoli and the whole system just repeats now i will make one more point about uh, what happens um, when we are exercising now when we exercise the because our muscles are producing greater volumes of carbon dioxide and consuming greater volumes of oxygen what that does is it increases the differences the differentials between the the muscle cells and the bloodstream and then obviously when the blood returns to the lungs again the the gradient the diffusion gradient again once it gets back to the lungs is also greater than it would be at rest and so the diffusion gradients during exercise increase substantially so that the oxygen and carbon dioxide can be swapped the gaseous exchange can take place faster during exercise and we'll look at that more in another video well i realize that's pretty technical and quite complicated i hope that's been helpful though to see it um, both diagrammatically and have it explained um, get in touch with me in the comments if you've got any questions but other than that thanks for watching See you in the next video.